So Olympus Has Fallen is sort of a throwback to mm. the kind of action movie. They don't really make as much as they used to. Do you mm. think this type of movie is a bit of a lost art form? Oof. I, you know, I don't know. I have, a, I have a big opinion about that, that, you know, movies in general like that. I mean, I grew up watching, you know, the uh, you know, Sergio Leone's and uh, the Scorsese early movies and the Oliver Stone early movies where, you know, Francis Ford Coppola, Apocalypse Downs, where they, you know, they pushed the envelopes then. They didn't, they didn't shy away from violence or anything else, you know. And so, um, I don't know if movies have lost the art form. I just think that um, it's harder to get them made. It's harder to get it done. I'm, there's a lot of filmmakers, I'm sure, that would like to do that. You know, I'm sure you know, Quentin gets to go and make his thing and go nuts and have a great time with it, and people respond to that. Um, I, I think that you know, for us, we just we weren't thinking about it like that. We just wanted to make the kind of movie we like, and we just went out and did that. Yeah, I mean, is it fun to kind of take on this sort of action hero? I, it's like an iconic role, one man versus a hundred. Is it fun to kind of sink your teeth into something like that? Yeah, it is. And, and, but we try and set it in the most believable context. You know, it's not like it just happens to wander into the White House. What you witness before that happens is awful because it's, it's the, 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 the attack is so strong and so destructive. And when they go in and they literally just execute everybody, then he happens to be the only survivor. Um, and I don't believe that it is just his journey because the first thing he does is he's assessing enemy capabilities and then he's establishing lines of communication. He's the eyes and the ears, so he's constantly in touch with the security advisors, right. with Morgan Freeman. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a team effort, you know, and, and even down in the bunker. If the president gives up, the whole team is lost. So you need his grit and his steel and, and, and Melissa Leo, mm -hmm. um, you know, Secretary of State. You, got, you, you, you need the strength of all those people. If anybody lets the side down, we're gone. Right. So it's, it, that's why you're gripped in every part of it because you rely on every single person to be performing under, under extreme duress. Yeah, going off of what he said, I mean, the action sequences in this, I mean, they're fun, but they're also kind of harrowing. And how do you, how do you reach that balance of you know, making it entertaining but not making it traumatic? But for me as a director, what I would go for first is always realism. I, I just find reality is just sometimes more exciting. And if you capture that and you know how to utilize the camera and you've got great actors and your heroes in the middle of it, then I think you can get the entertainment value, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's what filmmaking is about. And like I said, I grew up watching f movies where filmmakers used the camera to help convey a lot of emotion. You know, Coppola and those guys and Scorsese and those guys, the camera is another character. So that helps, you know. So Aaron, how does one prepare to play the Commander-in-Chief? Well, you have to get in touch with everything that's good and virtuous about yourself, you know, and um, all the best parts of yourself and honor and loyalty and, and then uh, try to go out there and hold your chest up high and your head up. And um, that's what I did. We looked toward, you know, JFK and uh, the, uh, President Obama and the young, energetic family, uh, family man who has to take on the, the world's pressures. So no calls to the White House? Oh, I call the White House all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't get through. Yeah, yeah. it's a one-way street. <laughs> Say, this guy's crazy. But you get, you, you get, she can get to the White House. Right. You should have helped him out. I don't know why I didn't. Yeah, what's up with I that? I know, but he had us in separate places and it was separate times, so I don't know. Could have come to the lunch. Yeah. Do you see a, a movie like Olympus Has Fallen as sort of escapist fun, or do you think there's a little bit of a deeper message or meaning to it? I don't think we meant it as a cautionary tale. We certainly... <laughs> But it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a fiction, but of course there's a lot of plausibility that's there and um, a great deal of accuracy because, you know, that was very important to Antoine and he had, uh, you know, uh, secret service personnel and career, you know, servants who, who were there with us all along the way and with the script. It was a script that had been written uh, a bit ago and so then they had to make it current bring it up to date when they got the you know the go-ahead but um, I'm certainly appreciative of the skill set of our Secret Service men and women you know in terms of keeping us safe and secure and do you have to sort of research like do you get to talk to people who have a, a job similar to the one you have in the movie to sort of get inside what goes on um, I did not get to talk to the director of the Secret Service but like I said the advisor who's there, who was a Secret Service on many, many missions, many dangerous missions, has had a wealth of experience that you wouldn't wish on anyone. <laughs> um, but 
is the kindest, gentlest soul that you could ever hope to meet. If you were in a position that uh, Gerard Butler is in, you know, where you have to wipe out all the bad mm. guys and save the, uh, the fate of the country, do you think you'd be up to the challenge? I'd like to think I, I would, yeah. I mean, just putting my family, if I had to save my family, you'd do what you had to do. I don't know if I could do some of those things he did, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the movies, yeah, I could. <laughs> no problem. And Olympus be believable is... at it. <laughs> real life. Looking good doing it. <laughs> I think in Olympus has fallen too. I'd like to see you get into the action a little bit more. Okay, got it. <laughs> what was more difficult, acting, presidential, or boxing with uh, Gerard Butler? Oh, both were fun. A lot of fun, I have to say. Boxing was fun because uh, it's good to get in there and mix it up. And Jerry wasn't being a wasn't afraid of being hit, and I wasn't. And Antoine's a Golden Globe boxer, mm -hmm. so it was a lot of fun for everybody in the crew to get up there and yuck it up. So when you're playing a villain in a movie like this, how much um, humanity do you try to instill in the character, and how much of it is just, I'm going to be as evil as I can? I don't think there's such a thing as uh, somebody being completely evil or somebody being completely good. And for me, it's, it's not interesting. I mean, uh, Han Solo was more interesting to me than Luke Skywalker. And so there, there's you know, every human being had a childhood. I focused on the childhood of, of my character. He saw his mother get blown up by an American landmine, and he was, no matter, it was out of his control, there was a responsibility there. Children feel responsible. Um, so his journey was to try to make that up and, 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 and kind of, you know, get his mother's love back somehow. But it's still, is it a little fun to, you know, gnash into the scenery a little bit? I mean, look, I, I think that uh, a movie is only as good as the bad guy because you have to have something to fight against, right? So, and any time you're playing someone who is quote-unquote bad, they never, a bad guy never thinks he's bad, right? He justifies it. You ask anybody in prison, there's a justification for what they did. They never think of themselves as bad. So that's the fun part is kind of trying to figure out this puzzle of a person and, what, and how, do they, how do they make sense of all the things they do because clearly they are. You both go one on one with uh, Gerard Butler. Were there any memorable bumps or bruises? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah, we're still suffering. Really? You got, you got, you got hit in the neck. Yeah. And, really? You no. Know, and I guess because you know Jerry was very respectful at that moment. But, uh, Jerry and I had known each other for for a long time, so we had some issues that we had to hash out. But and and but literally, you know, we had there was a lot a lot of trust there. The choreography that was there. We worked around it and brought up a lot of different moments. Yeah, I mean, does it take a lot of training to, to go into a scene like that, or did you come to the set ready to uh, kick some ass? Yeah, you choreograph it. You know, there's, there's a stunt coordinator, and you come up with the moves, and you try to figure it out. But then, you know, of course, Antoine calls action, and everything goes out the window. Is there any movie bad guy that you aspire to be in the same conversation with? Like, who is the iconic action here or action movie villain for you. I mean, I love what Gary Oldman did in, in The Professional, but it, it, it wouldn't have worked within this realm. But uh, of all of them, he, he was my favorite. How about you? Oh, wow. Favorite bad guy all time. Hmm. That's a, that's a rough one. I did like that one guy in, in Jaws. I guess it was Jaws and Bond. I thought you meant Jaws in Jaws. Because Jaws was, was pretty good. Too. <laughs> yeah.